What is up heroes, this is Minite Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we got our first ending, which didn't have as chaotic an ending as the one we did in uh, 999 was. But then we started to play around with time, and now that we're on this timeline, Sigma's clearly experiencing some difficulties about comprehending why he knows particular things, despite supposedly never having, you know, experienced them himself. And... The other thing is that history is not repeating itself as expected. Supposedly, what happened in the future is actually impacting the past. And so, we've been exploring that, and now Clover has come in to say that something is happening, and this is something new. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this is. I do want to also want to preface this episode by saying that I am really into this and I have the time to record again, so I will be recording ahead, so if it takes me three, four episodes to respond to or learn from something you guys mentioned in the comments, please do understand because, again, I'm recording a few episodes at a time, or a few episodes a day, so uh, without further ado, let's see what Clover is telling us about. Where is it? It's right over here in the next room. Just follow me. Alright, I still don't remember what happened the first time. Oh, wait! <laughs> I do remember, it was the bomb, right? Clover was first in the room, followed quickly by me, Kay, and Quark. She said nothing, just pointed under the bed. The three of us crouched down and followed her finger. There it was. W what the heck is this? I, I think it's a bomb. So I'm gonna see if we can skip. We can't. Interesting, so this is going to be a different way of approaching the bomb. Maybe Alice is not as eager to help us, given what happened with the Amdex game. The bomb... No, no way! It is interesting that we've seen these premonitions on this branch of the flowchart. It makes me think that... I mean, when we looked at the flowchart, right? We can, first of all, see where we are. But when we go down these super long branches. But it makes me think that, depending on how this goes, we could end up with the, the everybody blows up at the end timeline. I don't know if we'll have those premonitions in the other, you know, of the three main branches at the beginning. Very interesting. Sigma. Kaboom! Of course. It was the same bomb I'd seen in my vision. Then it hadn't been a hallucination. Is this really not the same? It's not. Okay. Had it actually been a premonition? We need to tell everybody. No, it's alright. Luna's out rounding them up. They should be here in just a few seconds. See? Where is it? Where's this bomb? No sooner had she spoken the words than the rest of our fellow captives appeared. Luna pushed through them and pointed at the bomb. There! You see? I wonder, who was it that discovered the bomb last time? Was it Quark, maybe? Or Kay? I think so. Huh? For several long moments, we just stared in silence. Slowly, we began to eye one another. Old suspicions suddenly reawakened. It was Fly who finally broke the silence. Okay, so this is, or at least that part was the same. Who was the first person to find this? Me. Okay, so this is how this whole, whole situation differs. Clover found the bomb first. And Luna. We found it while we were searching this room. I thought you and Luna were in the lounge. Well, yeah. We looked all over, but we couldn't find anything there. So we gave up on the lounge and came here. Yeah, I'm fairly confident it was Kay and Quark the first time around who found the bomb. I can confirm that. So, interesting. Where did Kay and Quark go this time or then? 
I wanted to look around the lounge some more, so I stayed back. You guys must have found it when you got here, then. So, maybe, interesting, we can try to figure out who planted the bomb there by seeing who found it and comparing across multiple timelines. Yes. How did you know it was a bomb? Well, I mean, I could tell just by looking at it. Why? Well, during my train training. Clover. So this is really interesting. So the first time around, Alice said that she recognized that it was a bomb because of, you know, hand wavy reasons related to her job that she can't disclose. Now, Clover is saying that she recognizes it's a bomb and she, you know, bites her tongue before she uh, discloses that it's from her training. Training related to what? Arguably the same training Alice went through. Clover's eyes widened and she clapped her hands over her mouth. Anyway, this is definitely a bomb. I guarantee it. How do you know? I just do, okay? So yeah, Clover and Alice are obviously hiding some sort of history between the two of them. You sounded pretty sure about the switch, too. How do you know all this? Let's just say it's an occupational hazard. What kind of occupation do you have? I can't tell you that. Spare me the crap. This isn't time for keeping secrets. Please, and then that deathly stare. Just trust me. Look, I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm sure that's a bomb. And it's not just any kind of bomb. It's an antimatter bomb. All right, is this the same? Yes. Okay, so from this part forward, the uh, the antimatter explanation is the same. Learning about making babies, lovely. And then everybody's talking about what they should do about it, and they end up deciding to leave it. And um, what is going on here? Just a, a brief look. I'm trying to remember. Things seemed really tense there. Oh, they're trying to decide who would have planted it, right? Hmm. Yeah, that's right. They're they're all looking at each other, unsure of who planted the bomb, etc. Okay, back to skipping. So this is largely the same, but obviously now we're gonna have to decide which door we go to. Chromatic doors have opened. Five minutes remain until chromatic doors close. Ah, that's right, they checked the time and everything. Hey, the doors are open! So last time we took a vote, and Clover, I think, was the final vote that put us with Alice again. We need to figure out who's gonna go through which door. Um, well, what are our options this time? Pay attention. I'm only saying this once. So we've got three combinations again. I wonder, they should be the same combinations. Option A, Luna and I pair up with Clover and go through the green door. That could be pretty interesting. Temyoji and Dio, Magenta, pair up with Alice, Yellow, and go through the red door. And then K and Quark pair up with Phi and go through the blue door, okay? Option B is Luna and I pair up with Phi and go through the red door. Temyoji and Dio pair up with Clover and go through the blue door. K and Quark pair up with Alice and go through the green door. Option C, Luna and I pair up with Alice, lovely, and go through the blue door, Temyoji and Dio. And so that, that option's probably gonna be off the table, just given how Alice is probably gonna react to us. But, yeah, let's see here. Three minutes remain until chromatic doors close. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, in the previous timeline we needed to find more dial or uh, vials of the Alexavir. I'm wondering if from this other from other timelines we'll find out that somebody else takes some of the dose, but they managed to find it elsewhere. 
And then when we jump back to that other timeline, we'll then know where to find that other time, that other uh, dosage. That could be pretty interesting. Okay, how do we want to do this? Well, you decided the first time, right? Yeah. Then can I decide this time? Oh, so now Alice is going to try to take charge. Why you? I think I deserve it. I only have one BP left. Interesting. I forget who proposed a sort of majority vote last time. It might have been Alice as well, but now that she has one BP, she's leveraging that to, I guess, influence this particular decision. Doesn't it seem like the fair thing is to let the person who's at the greatest disadvantage choose? Admittedly, despite being from Alice, I do agree. Wouldn't you agree? I think it is pretty fair. However, there's you're not the only person with one BP, are you? That means you should get to choose too. I mean, you've only got one BP, right? You've got a point. But how about we listen to what Alice wants first? Some useful information. So tell us, which door and which people do you want? The green door. And I want to go with K and Quark. Huh. So... I'm curious as to why she doesn't want to pair with Clover, right? Because that was that was the other option, wasn't it? Can I see the diagrams? If so, that would be nice. But no, I can't. So Alice pairing up with Temyoji and Dio was one option. And then Alice pairing up with Kay and Quark. So in this one, she can't pair up with Clover. Right? Yeah. Interesting. So her options were really just K and Quark or Temyoji and Dio. Hmm. Why did why would she want to go with Temyoji and Dio? Or she wouldn't want to go with Temyoji and Dio. Maybe it's because Temyoji has one BP and that could lead to some strain with the game, both of them not being able to afford to trust the other. Or why would she specifically want to go with Kay and Quark? Going through the green door. Hmm. I think the green door is the infirmary. If she does have some sort of advanced knowledge, uh, like we do from other timelines, she may intend to get something specifically from that area. Or was it the treatment center? I think it was the treatment center, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I can't really come up with much as to why she'd want to be with Kay and Quark, but it is good to know that she can't be with Clover. I see. Option B, then. That means Tenmyoji and Dio will go with Clover through the blue door. Is that alright with you, Tenmyoji? Yeah, sure, I don't mind. Why? If we go through there together, that means you'll be playing against me in the next AB game. Are you really sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Matter of fact, that's why I want to go with you. Again, Temyoji making plays to establish or earn, earn the trust of other people. I, you know, Temyoji's grown on me in that regard. You said you didn't trust me, right? Well, I'd like to change your mind. I figure this will give me the chance. Um... I've been wanting to pair up with Alice, too. There's something I want to talk to you about. Huh? What does Temyoji know about Alice that that he wants to talk to her about? Does he have some does he know her from outside the game? Does he have some sort of suspicion as to what her occupation might be? Oh, and that is We'll get to that later. 
とにかくアリスさんの第一希望はパターン B なんですよね。Anyway, Alice's first choice would be option B then. Yes, I guess. What about the rest of you? Is that okay too? I mean, in that case, we'd be pairing up with Phi, right? I thought about it for a moment. If I went with option B, then Luna and I would go through the red door with Phi. As far as how I felt about that. Oh! So I either get to say that's okay, or I say no. Hmm. If I say no, I potentially weaken my relationship with Phi, which. For the most part, we've we've stayed pretty solid with, right? We didn't go up against go against her wishes with the first AB game, so we're on pretty good terms. Do I want to test that or not, right? Do I want to go with Phi or what is my other option, right? The other option is if I'm not okay with this, then what? Well, I'm not going to be pairing up with Alice. So, I would pair up with Clover. It's either Clover or Phi. I think? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. How do I feel about pairing up with Phi? In this situation, I think we actually may be able to. If it's me, Luna, and then Phi, you know, Phi, the person that I'd. Established a good relationship with, I think we may be able to ally all together in the next Ambidex game. So I think I am going to say yes. Yeah, that's fine. I don't have any problems with it. There were no objections. Then we're all set. Let's go, everybody. So now we're going through the red door. Ten seconds remain until chromatic doors close. All right. I'm trying to remember, it was the treatment center. There was the garden. What was the other room that we saw in this set of chromatic doors? Anyways, we nodded quickly to one another and split up. K, Quark, and Alice headed for the green door. K, Quark, and Alice. Okay. Well, Temyoji, Dio, and Clover ran toward the blue one. Interesting. I don't think there's a lot to be trusted there in that second trio. Clover, Dio, and Temyoji, I don't think any of them have really worked together in the past. Clover and Temyoji had some sort of tension in the past, but. My feet slapped against the hard metal of the warehouse floor, and Luna, Fi, and I ran to the red chromatic door in the next stage of the nonary game. Chromatic door is closing. Oh, wasn't the place... No, it wasn't a lounge. So we go through the red door. Let's see where we find ourselves. Huh? Is this a dead end? All three doors seem to be locked. Yeah, looks like it. I wonder what this thing is. It looks like the thing next to the number 9 door. It's got a lever. Try pulling it, Sigma. <laughs> Why should I? It might be dangerous. Maybe it'll trigger an explosion? Or possibly it shocks you when you pull it? Fly's just gonna let, you know, let uh, Sigma's imagination go, go running. Who knows? Right. Then I have no choice. Did you really think I'd say that, you heartless monster? <laughs> There's nothing on either side, is there? What's that supposed to mean? Ah, sorry for the confusion. I was talking about... Wait, what? I was talking about your breasts? Excuse me? Oh my god, I just got it. <laughs> Sigma, that is... Aggressive. And... Not... Not okay. <laughs> not cool. Ugh, it's called dressing modestly. I'll have you know I'm a C cup. If you're a C cup, I'm packing 12 inches. <laughs> what 
did this game just become? We continued in that vein for some time, until the whole reason I chose this route was to maintain a good relationship with Fi, right? And Sig was just throwing that out the window, talking about her breasts. Literally met her a couple hours ago, in a life or death situation. It's, uh, some tact he got there. Anyways, we pulled a lever and one of the doors opened. Huh? What? <laughs> it sounded like you two might take a while, so I pulled the lever. <laughs> Luna coming to the rescue. Is that okay? Only the one on the left opened. The others are still shut tight. I mean, now my next question is, what if we pull the lever again? Will it open the other doors? Can only one of the doors be open at a given time, right? Well, we should get going anyway. Yeah. Yep. To where is the question. So this is interesting. Why did we not hear about this at all? In the other timeline. Right? We did split up. And we met up with the other group who had been in the treatment center, but the other group, we didn't hear about where they were in the slightest. What is this place? It looks like some kind of control room. I can see a huge machine of some sort on the other side of this window. Maybe a generator? Hmm. Right, well, let's split up and look around. We need cards with the moon on them for the next AB game, right? Yeah. They're probably in this room somewhere. Then let's get started. Time to seek a way out. Got a new puzzle. Okay, norm normally they do the whole, I don't know, they show you the room beforehand, so it's a little bit surprising that they didn't immediately. I think that's the door we came in. Whoa, this, uh, it's like zooming in as we're spinning around. It's kind of disorienting, honestly. But, okay, so we'll start here, right? This is the door we walked in from, I believe. We can confirm that. Is that the door we came through? I don't think there's any point going back out. Yep, okay, wanted to confirm that. Let's look at this area over here. It looks like maybe like a 3D printer or something, or what is this thing? It's huge. I guess it's used to analyze things. Looks like it's missing a part though. Okay, so a part is necessary here. So something we'll have to analyze at some point. Anything to do with the control panel? No. Nope. Okay. What about over here? That's a tall screen. I don't think it's turned on. Maybe it can't get power for some reason. Hmm. Alright, so some degree of power. It looks like there might be something useful for that. Can I can I rotate? Oh no, I have to back out of this first. We got a bunch of switches over here. And numbers. Lovely. What's this? It's got all these pipes. Look at the black and yellow lever. It says power under it. Do you think this tubing has electrical cables in it or something? Maybe flipping these levers will let us change the amount of electrical current. What would that accomplish? I don't know. Well, I'm guessing the power lever is the source. Hmm. Might as well give it a... Wait. Don't get ahead of yourself. Look at the 320. Oh. The lever's missing. Without a replacement lever, I don't think we'll be able to do anything. Okay, so we'll come back to this puzzle when we have to use a, a lever. I'm very intrigued by the puzzle, though. I, I really want to get into it. What is this on the left? So, on, off, on, 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 off, 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 on, on, off, 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 on, off, off, on, off, huh. You didn't have to read the whole thing out loud. <laughs> Thanks, Luna. Look, there's a hole in the middle of it. Oh, yeah. The sheet has on and off written on it a bunch of times. There's a tiny hole in the middle of the paper that looks like it was made with a needle. Can I... Can I take this? Or I probably have to interact with it in some manner. Hmm. What do we have over here? A safe. Okay, with the typical number pad. Slacker looks like the one in the crew quarters. Even the puzzle panel looks similar. Let's figure out how this works first. 
okay? So it is pretty similar, we just have to do some simple arithmetic. Darn, I don't get it. <laughs> there are four spots I need to fill. If I put in the right numbers and press enter, it should unlock. What's this one over here? So, oh, it has like an hours and minutes stuff going on in the, in the top. So that would be like three hours and I don't know, um, 52 minutes. And then six hours and 17 minutes, something like that. So our input is gonna be two different times and we'll need to order them or color code them and then use the math to input that. Okay. That's good to know. It's an interesting input. Now we've got a clock up here, or no, this looks like a, no, it is a clock. I thought maybe it was like a pressure gauge. A blue clock. It says 510 minutes on the face. That's a long time. That's how many hours? Eight and a half? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So maybe I'll write that down in the memo pad. Can definitely erase this. And we'll say 510 minutes, which is equal to 6.5 hours. Okay. Anything else here? Maybe it's missing, is it missing the hands? I don't see them, but we'll come back to that. What about these binders up here? Hmm, these look promising. Let's see here. Darn, I can't understand any of this. Is this some kind of code? None of these have anything useful. So much for that. Oh, all right, well, at least the game is straightforward about the utility of those. What is this? A protractor. Okay. It has some stuff drawn on it already, though. Wow, a protractor. Haven't seen one of these in a while. You remember what they're for, right? You use them to figure out angles. There is a red line 30 degrees away from the 90 degree mark. Okay. What's it mean? Maybe it's telling you to set some angle to 30 degrees. Okay, that's um... That's helpful. It's what, 30 degrees away from the 90 degree point? There are 180 degrees in a semicircle meaning 30 degrees would be one hour to the left of a 12 o'clock position, or one hour away, one clock face number away. Hmm. So maybe something like 11 o'clock would work here? Yeah. That's good to know. What is this? A compass. Okay. Shout out to uh, that one Professor Layton puzzle. <laughs> A compass, for those of you that have seen that Let's Play. One leg has a needle, and the other leg has a pencil. Do you think we're supposed to use this for something? Well, usually you use a compass to draw circles. Where should we draw a circle, though? On a piece of paper, I would assume. How big of a circle? Hmm, I don't know. If we had an angle to set the compass to, that might help. Well, there's our answer. And there's that paper we found earlier. Let's keep exploring, though. Some papers. They're filled with incomprehensible code. What about these boxes? A cardboard box filled with complicated machinery. All right, definitely not what I expected, but do you think we can use it? What for? I don't even know what it is. <laughs> How can we use it if we don't know what it is? I mean, I guess to a certain extent, it depends on what you plan to use it for, right? Okay, anything else under here? No, some cardboard boxes with machinery. All right, so I think we've covered that area. Let's keep looking to the left. What about these boxes? Oh, numbers clipboard. So arrow pointing from left to right. We have some numbers that, you know, read 5962, 6783, 1214, 7314, but also these numbers are color coded and, um, Maybe we have to read the certain colors of the numbers from left to right, rather than left to right in the rows that they're in. Might be relevant. Well, will almost certainly be relevant, but I don't know exactly what for yet. All right, this piece of paper has four rows of four digit numbers. The colors of each digit seems to be random. Green, blue, yellow, pink. They all look like highlighter colors. <laughs> hmm, highlighters you say. 
All right, maybe that's something we're gonna look for. These are wrapped in PP bands. PP bands? Rope made of polypropylene. All right, thanks for the fun fact. Some folded cardboard boxes, they're wrapped with something called a PP band. So maybe we'll need to cut that at some point. Interesting, because otherwise I wouldn't expect them to note that. Oh, interesting, so this is a red clock, right? So I'm gonna go to my memo and write that this was in blue. And our next one will be the red clock. So the red is 11,400 seconds. So, wait, seconds. I didn't even, did I check the units for the other one? I wanna go back and check that really quick. So that's 510 minutes. Okay, lovely. So in terms of seconds, 11,400 seconds. So 11,400 seconds. There are, and we're probably trying to turn vert this to hours and minutes, right? So if there are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, that's 3,600 seconds in an hour. And 11,400 is three, close to three times that, right? So three times 3,600 should be 1,800 or 10,800. <laughs> wait, no, I don't want to. Oh, wait, there's an eraser here. Lovely. Here we go. Yes, 10,800. And we would need 600 more seconds after that, which would be one sixth of an hour or 10 minutes, right? So this would be three hours and 10 minutes. I think that sounds about right. Just to check, 3,000 times three is 9,000, 600 times three is 1,800. Add those together, you get the 10,800. That is again, three hours, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. And then we're still missing 600 seconds, which again is 10 minutes. So I think we're, we're pretty good on the red one. And then I'm gonna circle the blue one up here, 510 minutes is six and a half hours or six hours and 30 minutes. And that should get us in that left uh, chest that we saw earlier. All right, let's keep looking. This is a safe. We know what that's for. Over here, there's some books. <laughs> Looks like there's a few different books here. We've got some sort of dense technical thing and a novel. Hmm. Doesn't look like there are any clues here, though. All right, well, that's good to know. Some cardboard boxes. Doesn't look like there's anything useful. I mean, can we move any of these cardboard boxes? No? Okay. And then we've got this amalgamation of controls over here. This looks like it's the control panel. It's covered with screens and buttons and so on. Can we interact with any of them? No? Okay, it's probably these levers here. When I inevitably <laughs> manage to rotate the screen. This one, this odd colored one looks a little bit loose. It's covered with screens and buttons. Can I not do anything with them? No, I can't, okay, lovely. Hey, I think you can move these. Oh, you're right. Interesting. It says off on the top and on on the bottom. Hmm. Gotcha. So going from left to right, we're going to have a series of ons and off. We probably have to draw a circle on that on and off page to get the order of those switches. Um, is there any other switches we can interact with? Let's take a look over here. Still control panel. Clicking just for the sake of making sure I'm not missing something. Because <laughs> that would be less than ideal. I hate trying to solve a puzzle without all the necessary information. What do we have here? A laptop. It's got something on the screen. Well, it has a T, but I saw a page on the left that said test with the different colors. It's the letter T. Huh. Did you see that thing plugged into the side of the laptop? Yeah. It looks like a memory stick. Okay. USB scanner. It's got a red line on it. Huh. The screen changed. Do you think it's because you pulled that thing out? I think so. What happens, can we put it back in? Let's try plugging this thing in again. It gives us a green T. Okay, and we can see on the left, there's a test clipboard with green, blue, and then yellow, and then pink. Maybe indicating some sort of in order to actually you know, read these in. Well, we'll see. We'll take this back for now. What is that looking at? That is where we found that other clipboard. Oh, so maybe that's just to help find that clipboard. We'll see. Okay, what about this over here? 
Wow, a lot of control panels. This looks like it's the control panel. Hey, just wondering, uh, does this look like the control panel to you guys? Because I think it looks like it's the control panel to me. And I, I venture to guess it's covered with screens and buttons, in fact. <laughs> but again, I just don't, I don't want to miss, you know, what I can potentially click on. If there's anything I can input or, you know, a lever that we're looking for, right? I mean, for what it's worth, a lot of the screens and stuff that look the same across the entirety of the board are probably unlikely to be something I can actually interact with. But again, I don't want to really chance missing out on something. So, we are clicking. Now, I think that covers our full scan. I want to take a look at this control area, though. What is that thing? An octopus? <laughs> That's a pretty big octopus. Yeah, it'd take us all our lives to eat something that big. Don't eat it. <laughs> um, uh... I think that maybe that's an annihilation reactor? What? Annihilation? You mean like that bomb? Yes. How do you know about those, Luna? The core of the annihilation bomb would work on the same principles. I think Fi knows a lot more than me about these things, though. Well, I wouldn't say that. I've just picked up a few tidbits of information here and there. Tidbits, huh? If it is what Luna thinks, it should be pretty simple. There's going to be a bunch of matter and antimatter in there, probably hydrogen and antihydrogen bumping into one another. You get the name. Or, wait, what? When they do it, or when they do, they annihilate one another, that's where you get the name. And release a bunch of energy. You can actually calculate how much energy by taking the mass defect and... Gah, stop! Interesting. Did they get that explanation last time? I think they did. Too complicated. You're saying that Octopus thing is a machine that runs off of annihilation energy, right? Well, machine is a weird way to put it. It's more like an engine, like a steam engine or an internal combustion engine, just better. All the electricity in this facility is generated by Mr. Octopus. So that would make this room, yes. This is Mr. Octopus's control room. <laughs> that's pretty funny, but that's good to know. That's probably going to be really helpful just across all the timelines, knowing that the facility's energy comes from this area here. Um, there's a big mechanical octopus behind the glass. Apparently it's some kind of power generator called an annihilation reactor. Okay. So, I think the next thing we can do is we can go to this paper and use our protractor. I think that's the first thing I would like to do. Not our protractor, our compass. There's a small hole. Were you thinking about putting the compass needle in that hole? Yeah. The compass isn't spread, though. I don't think you can draw a circle like that. Oh, okay. So we probably have to combine this with the protractor. There we go. The expanded compass. The sheet has on and off run it a bunch of times. Tiny hole. So, I just put the compass needle in here. And there we have it. On, off, on, off, off, off. Going from left to right, I guess. Uh, or rather, clockwise from the top. That is good to know. I'm going to write this down in our memo pad. Or I should... Well, how do I want to do this? I will write off... I'll just draw it in the orientation it is. And that way... I mean, the switches were in a line. So we could follow this arc around, but I'm not entirely sure where we start and where we end. For what it's worth, I mean, there are only six different places to start, so it's not the end of the world, but if we have to do a little bit of guesswork. But we also have something else I think we can input now, right? Um, because we have the two times. The blue clock is going to be six and a half hours, so six hours and 30 minutes, right? So the first one we need is six, which will be problematic, right? If we need six, how can we, how can we get six here? Five hundred ten minutes. Oh wait, that's not six. Why would I think that was? I was like doing the math and getting four hundred eighty. That's eight hours. I'm silly. Eight hours and thirty minutes. That probably made a lot of you cringe. Um, so eight hours and thirty minutes, which is gonna be thirteen plus seventeen, and then the red we said was three hours and ten minutes. So three hours and then ten would be six plus four. Lovely. You did it. It unlocked. See if you can open it. I mean, yeah. Do what I can. What the heck is that? <laughs> Rainbow tree root? Excuse me? 
Excuse me? Okay, well, I think this is the thing we need to analyze. So, we can maybe place that here for now. Hmm. I think I could put that rainbow-colored root here. Okay. Rainbow-colored root. <laughs> we put it on the machine. What do we do now? So, I don't think we can actually use it, though. Hmm. This doesn't feel right. I think we're missing something. The power, maybe? We still need to seem to be missing something. Yeah, we need the power, right? So... That means, well, we've used, I believe, the tools and stuff we do have at the moment. We have this USB scanner and these clipboards, but I'm not sure what these refer to just yet. I still think we're going to need that rainbow root in order to do something with that. Maybe? Hmm. I'm thinking if we can get a four-digit passcode from, from this numbers clipboard. I mean, I obviously see eight ways that we can immediately get some relatively reasonable four-digit codes that we could try, but I don't really want to do that just yet. I think I'd rather have a go at the set of switches here. We have six that go on and off, and I'd imagine this one in the middle that's awkwardly colored is going to be the one that we can pull off and use elsewhere. So, we can orient them in a particular manner. We'll start off with on, and then go off, on, off, and then off, off. Okay, Sigma, what are you doing? Don't break it. Ah, no, it wasn't me. It just fell off. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. It just spontaneously fell, which can happen, but... Well, it's off now, so no point in crying over spilt levers. <laughs> I appreciate the joke, Five. Maybe we can use it somewhere else. Like where? Okay, yeah, so we can obviously use this at that set of power switches we found earlier. And then we can hopefully power that machine to analyze the rainbow route. And that's going to be really helpful for deciphering what I believe are those that numbers clipboard. So now that we have that, we can place that here. Okay. If I just put it here... Good. There we go. Okay. So what happens if I click power? So what should I do with this thing? I found a manual on the floor over there. Well, that's really helpful. It says that this machine doesn't really use electricity in a conventional way. Huh? Those tubes use some kind of special liquid to transmit electricity. What? Actually, it's pretty complicated. <laughs> is that an actual thing? You guys let me know. Is this... I haven't... I've never heard of this, but if this is an actual thing, that would be really cool. The simple version is that you can adjust the voltage by adjusting the flow of the liquid. So let's say you turn that rightmost lever all the way to the left. Rightmost lever all the way to the left. If you do that, then all the liquid coming from 240 will go to the left tube. Turn it all the way to the right, and it all goes to the right tube. What if you put it in the middle? Then it gets halved. Each pipe will end up with 120 instead of one getting 240. So what's the deal with the question marks? Those represent unknowns in the target values. The one with three question marks means it's supposed to be a three-digit number, while the ones with only two mean those are two-digit numbers. And of course, the single question mark means that value is only a single digit. Ooh, I like this. <laughs> what about the one that starts with three? Well, I would guess that means the hundreds digit has to be three. So, question mark four, question mark means the tens digit has to be four. And question question five means the ones digit has to be five, right? Yes, I think so. So let me see if I've got this. We need to adjust the levers so the liquid gives us the right numbers on the bottom. Yes, that's correct. Once you've got all the levers set, then we can get our power going. Okay, makes sense. I think that about covers it. Oh wait, one more thing. The liquid will only flow from top to bottom. The manual is very specific about that. Okay, let's do this thing. All right, that is good to know. Um, so for example, uh, I don't, actually, I don't think you guys can see my uh, mouse, but let's see here. What can we relatively easily deduce here? Our, I think our single question mark is a good place to start, meaning that whatever flow it does get, it needs to be divided so many times that it, um, well, it's single digit. And when we look at what's connected to that single question mark, there are two intersections, two handles leading from 320 
And there are also two handles leading from 210. Well, no, that wouldn't make it there, would it? So then, what could we do, right? The only thing leading to that question mark, in fact, is going to be the 320. And if we're gonna have to split that a number of times, well, we could split it into 160 coming down from the 320, 160 goes left, 160 goes right. 160 comes down to the next handle, 80 goes right, 80 goes left. That doesn't seem good. <laughs> so how can we only get a single digit, something we need to be divided so many times by that point, right? I honestly don't see how it's possible. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. All right, well, let's let's think about something else. On the far left, we have some, or let's think on the far right. I think st staying on the far outside um, could be helpful. If we start off with 240, and we need to get to a double digit number, that seems reasonable enough. We would have to split the 240 into 120, and then the 120 would have to be split again into 60. So I think leaving those levers on the far right, straight up, oh, interesting. So just as they are right now is the way to go for this one. The 240 will come down, 120 to the right, 120 to the left. 120 to the right is gonna get split into 60 to the right and 60 to the left. So now let's consider what else we have, right? So that 240 is getting split into 120, which is going to the left. And then when it's split again, it's gonna have 60 to the left. So, so far in the question mark for question mark, we have 180 going towards it, which means if we want that tens digit to be a four, we need to add something with a 60 in it, right? And we can conveniently split the 320 into 160. So I think we're actually gonna to need to leave this lever underneath the 320 also split down the middle like it is currently. And if that's the case, we'll have, can I draw on this? I can't. We'll have 340 in the, in the second from the right. And that fits that. I'm still perplexed by this single question mark, but that's okay for now, I guess. So far we've locked in these three lever positions, right? They need to be straight up. And so if this 320 has a straight up lever, 160 is going to the left. Oh, <laughs> that's clever. That's tricky though. So that question mark being a single digit means it must be zero. So this lever must be positioned in this manner, or this manner, so it all goes to the left. And if that's the case, we have 160 going to the left, which is going to go towards that, um, the middle one that ends with zero. So we have 160 going there. Then now let's take a look at the left hand side. Because so far, we just made to, we just need to make sure that the 210 is not divided twice, right? Because if it's divided once, we're actually not divided at all. Which means I would actually bet that this is going to be like this. Because if the 210 is divided at all, if there's any flow from the left-hand side, it has to be from that 210, right? And when we divide that once, we'll get 105. And if we divide that again, obviously, we'll get... Uh, a decimal that is or a fraction that's not um, gonna be helpful so this has to be to the left as it is currently so we only have three levers left to figure out and let's maybe think about this one that ends in five right so 210 well in order to end with something in five the 240 if it's divided once It'll be 120, if it's divided again, it'll be 60, if it's divided again, it'll be 30. So we're never gonna get a five from that. So if we need to get something that ends with five, we need to divide the 210 into two, which means we've solidified that that lever directly underneath 210 needs to be straight up like it is currently. If that is the case, 105 will be going to the right and then it'll make its way down there. 105 will also be going to the left and it's gonna make its way to that bottom left lever 
we can't afford to split it there. It either all needs to go to the right or all go to the left. If that 105 goes back to the right, it's gonna make it a zero, so this must go to the left. If that 105 goes to the left, what happens? Well, we have 105, but we need to get to um, 300 something, and well, at this point it actually doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> if it if we go right or left with that top left lever, right? Um, it'll be split into 120, 120 like this, and it'll all end up going back to that one on the far left. It could be oriented to the left, and it'll end up the same thing. And it'll be like 300. Uh, 45 I think so I think we're actually okay nice that was fun <laughs> I like that yes I am a champion look okay so the machine has turned on lovely it turned the power on okay so now that we've done that I think we're I think we're good in that regard so let's head on over to this machine and see if we can analyze it. A tall screen. It seems to be powered, but nothing happens when I touch it. Hmm. Let's go on over this way, see if we can do something. We still seem to be missing something. The root. Look at that thing. I know, isn't it beautiful? Are you kidding? It's gross. I mean, I can, I can see either way, but we're still missing something. Oh, do I need to use the, the USB? Is that what I need to do? Use it on the screen or whatever? It doesn't respond when I touch it. Hmm. Is there something else? Oh, is it not a... Uh, maybe I have to put the paper on it. No? Okay. I thought it might like illuminate a particular segment of it. Hmm. Um, did it say it's shining with all the colors of the rainbow? Okay. I wanted to try using this USB scanner. Okay, so given that we're still missing something and given what we have, I would bet that we're supposed to unlock this cabinet on the right using a four digit code that we get from the papers with the numbers that we currently have. I don't see a very effective means. Hmm, let's go back to this laptop. What else can we do with it? There's a T on the screen. It's green. Does that mean we're supposed to stick with the green for the numbers? I think so. Let's try it. 7213. All right, we'll slowly work our way around the room. <laughs> Let's try it. 7213 is the number we'll try. So seven is a prime number which means we're gonna to need to do some addition here. Five plus two, seven, and then it was what, two, one, three? Two, one, three, I think? Oh, I can't look at my stuff. Um, we'll, we'll try it, right? <laughs> so two is going to be what here? Um, two plus zero, okay. One is going to be two divided by two, and then three is going to be two plus one. Is that an option here? Yes, okay. It is, awesome. Excellent, unlocked. Good work, now open it. What are we gonna find in here? A disc-shaped part. Okay, so this is clearly the final part that we need for that machine. So let's go and have a look. The root. Um, oh, we need to put it up here probably, right? Huh, looks like it would fit. Here we go. Um, nothing's happening. Hold on, it's, oh, it's doing the scanning. It's moving. Looks like it's finally ready. But ready for what? Well, we'll find out when we touch that screen, right? Ready for you to use this, I'm guessing. This screen? Yeah, I think. Let's give it a go. I think I've got it. This machine is a CT scanner. Interesting. You mean like from a hospital? Yes. One of those things that can take pictures of cross sections of your brain and organs and stuff? Yes. It can image things other than the human body too. Like this root for instance. I actually did some research for a little bit where used CT scans to um, analyze fossils 
that were still like buried within rock. So rather than have to chisel away and, and reveal and potentially damage the fossils in the process, you could actually just look at the densities of different parts of a, a rock and see what was the fossil inside by recreating a 3D model. It was, it was actually pretty cool. Hmm. Oh boy. So what we're seeing on the left is a slice of that root. <laughs> I think so. What are we supposed to do then? Now I think trial and error is going to be the best way to figure this one out. Just start messing with it and we'll see what happens. Alright. Dragging up and down where the image of the root is displayed will allow you to scroll between layers. The bottom layer has eight circles of different colors. Four of those circles are blank. Assign an appropriate number to each circle. The numbers you can use are displayed below below the cross section. You can move the numbers where they need to go by dragging them. Here goes nothing. So what happens when we drag? Gotcha. So I wish there was some more like three-dimensional data for, for this, but anyways. Um, in the top left we have yellow, which is four sixteenths, right? Um, that would imply, if we simplify that as a fraction, that's going to be one-fourth of potentially the entirety of the root. If that's one-fourth, then six would need to be in this yellow here. Let's see if this mechanism works. If the red is supposed to be three-fifteenths of a hundred, I think twelve might be too much, actually. Three-fifteenths is one-fifth. Um, oh, wait, no, that makes a bunch of sense, actually. So then this would be eighth or eight, and then six over 20 would be 30%, right? So 30 would mean a nine goes here. And then what we have left is, um, I don't remember. <laughs> so we have 20%, 30%, which is 50, and then so 75. So we have another 25%, right? So 10 would go here. Cool, that, that was pretty clever actually. And I like the imagery of using a root. Huh, it looks like I got it. You sure did. That's amazing. Good work. Well, would you look at that. <laughs> the color changed. Hmm, I wonder. Have a look, Sigma. All right, so this is going to be green. And thank you so much to uh, those of you who commented clarifying that the blue is the hidden file and the green is the um, escape password. This is... I knew it. You've seen a password like this before, haven't you, Luna? Yes. In the AB room and the infirmary. It'll open the safe, right? Yep. Cool, we found that password. Now the question is, can we find the blue password, right? At this point, I think we found everything, right? So now my inclination would be to see, can we reopen the number pad? Nope, what about this one? Nope. Okay. Can we... What else can we potentially mess with is the real question. Hmm. What else could we mess with? What else do we have, right? We have test and we have this numbers clipboard, but I don't see another way that I can input these things, right? We already took the compass and the protractor. Why did they mention the the binding of the cardboard boxes? That's the only thing that I feel like they mentioned that seemed kind of weird. <laughs> but it, it, it's interesting, I can't input another thing there and I can't input another thing there. So if I'm going to find another password, it's almost certainly going to be related to the scanner. Can I re-look at the scanning again? We can leave this thing alone now. So the next question is where, hmm, part of a machine is shaped like a ring, the light in the middle is flashing. Okay, I guess we, uh, we really can leave this thing alone. Hmm. So the only other screen I can think of that would display a particular password would be this computer. Yeah. 
maybe I have to do that and then I, I would bet that it's a fixed image and doesn't actually reflect this being, you know, shaken. Or, oh, that's right, it goes back as soon as I leave. Huh. This is the usual safe. Is there anything on the ground, maybe? Or on the ceiling? I haven't really looked at the ceiling much. I mean, the green from the USB thing was helpful for that clue. We've used all of the items we have at least once. However, that doesn't mean there isn't something I still need to use again. The very first puzzle, <laughs> or not the very first, but our first chromatic door taught us that. Anything on the floor? No. What about over here? We haven't really interacted with the, the octopus at all. <laughs> Where else can I do something? I could try to switch these positions. The power's already on, I can leave it alone now. Okay. Well, I mean, that's good to know. Maybe those on-off switches again? If I were to go in like the different direction, like counterclockwise? That's another potential input, I guess. The lever fell off, I can't get it to work anymore. Maybe it won't work anymore because the lever fell off. Okay, so that's out of the question. So what else can I still interact with is the real question. I'm not even really seeing much that I can interact with, except for the safe, right? We have the clocks. We have those, those, this clock. Is there something else I can do with this? I don't think we'll be needing this anymore. Hmm. Where else could I even get, you know, something to display? I feel like the only thing is that computer. But I'm not even seeing much of a an area for, like, input there. Is there anything else I can input the USB into? Hmm. Uh, oops, nope. I wish there was an easier way to go around the room without just having to drag, but that's not the end of the world. This all looks very samey. Is there something like behind here? I know I've already looked, but... What else is there? find this hidden file password. Did I screw it up, guys? Because I already, I don't know, broke off the lever or input the correct passcode for those other things? I don't know. It's not like I have, I mean, these are the only things I have left. Let's see. Piece of paper with four rows of four digit numbers. Um... Can I no longer work with the analysis machine or whatever, or the CT scanner, because I did the correct answer or the escape answer first? Did I mess this up, guys? I don't know. I feel like I did. But I feel like if I did, it's for a pretty stupid reason, right? I feel like I should be able to mess around with this root thing again to get it to display a different number. But even then, I can't really think of a different way to solve that particular puzzle. Hmm. Trying to figure it out. I don't have, I don't have a lot more time to record, honestly, so this is a little bit of a struggle. Maybe I'll, um, I'll think about it with what time I do have. If I come up with something, well, you guys will know. Huh? That's strange. What is it? Look at this screen. The clipboard is still there. Wait, what? Yeah, I can see that. 
I guess this isn't a real-time image then. I thought maybe it was showing pictures from that camera on top of the screen. Are you kidding me? We're not on the screen. <laughs> of course it's not a feed from that camera. Oh, you have a point. Alright, here's our lead, guys. You two are hopeless. Or is it not a lead? I can see two bundles of cardboard on the screen. This isn't a live feed. Can I... Aw, oh, man, I thought I was going to be able to, like, input something. There's a camera on top of the laptop. Can I do something with it? Yes, no, maybe. Aw, oh, man. Here I was thinking we were on the right track. But I don't think there's anything more we can do with this. Just a little bit of unique dialogue. Again, if we input the USB... There's a T on the screen, um, something with the camera, nope, anything else, mouse pad, power button, no. Hmm, I feel like there's maybe some way we can alter the USB and thus have it display something different on screen, and that would be our second password, or, I don't know, I hope I, hope I didn't screw it up already. I mean, really, the only thing we can interact with left is this laptop. And I don't know what else we can do with it, with the items we have. I've tried clicking all over the laptop. I just don't know. Hmm. Look at this. Test was written with a highlighter, wasn't it? Yeah. Each letter is a different color, too. So do you think that letter T you're seeing on the laptop might be an image capture by a scanner or something? Huh? What do you mean? Sometimes scanners don't pick up stuff written with certain colors of highlighter. Maybe this one didn't like the blue, yellow, or pink highlighters. And that's why we only got the green tea? Can't be sure, but it seems pretty likely to me. Okay. Is that helpful? Fi seems to think that stuff written with the highlighter might not always be picked up by the scanner. That means that the tea on the lap or on the laptop might be from the sheet of paper on the clipboard. Is that pertinent? I don't know. I can't even find a way to input any of these numbers. So I eventually looked it up and uh, I guess one thing I did not think to do is rather than just check what items I have was to try combining them. I. Um, I consider this a USB drive, not necessarily a USB scanner, and I think that's where the confusion comes with here, or comes from here. The solution is to combine the USB scanner with the test, for example, and um, you have the USB scanner yellow, and you can put that in here, and it'll now give us a new password. Oh, hey, the screen's blue now. This is, yeah. And so this is going to be our hidden file password. Hmm, looks like a password. <laughs> Think this is for the panel or the safe? On the safe? I assume so. Honestly, not a big fan of that one. Uh, you could have, or I guess we were supposed to combine the scanner with the other stuff too. So before it like supposedly only saw green or whatever. And so when you did the USB scanner green and plugged it in, it would show you this, and that's how you were to get that password before. Huh, it changed. Yeah, so again, I think the confusion here comes from USB scanner versus like USB drive. When I look at this, I think of it as a USB drive that's uploading data and, you know, showing whatever's on it, not something that is actually scanning a potential paper that I, uh, that I have on hand. So, yeah, you... you had to combine the test clipboard with the USB scanner and then plug it in. Honestly, a bit of a letdown for a hidden file password, but not the end of the world. We'll put in that and then we should be good to go. A safe. It looks like the ones I saw in the AB room and the infirmary. So if we put in password, it should open. It looks like it works the same too. So we will start with the blue one. I actually wasn't really <laughs> paying attention. So it's star, moon, moon. Going from top left to down. So that should be our hidden file. Lovely. Piece of cake. Gladly take that. We'll back out and then we'll give our second one a go. Overall, I actually really like this room a lot. Um, I think the, I mean, I've already mentioned what I thought about the hidden file password, but all the other puzzles were cool, very mathy. Um, 
Let's see, star, sun, and moon. Okay, star, sun, and then moon. But yeah, I, I really like the mathy puzzles. I like the number puzzles. Um, and the CT scanner idea was pretty cool too. So, yes. Yes, it opened. All right, let's see what we find. Let's get our prizes. First, we've got another map. A map. Or rather, a, a map, right? This is the timeline where we didn't get this before. It says floor B. The one we found in the crew corner said floor A. Sort of the one in the infirmary. Hmm. We came down here using an elevator, right? So that would make A the top floor. Seems weird. Don't the numbers usually count up from the bottom floor? Well, look at it this way. A for above, B for below. A for ally, B for betrayed. <laughs> Why does that seem ominous? Whatever. Moving on. Our next prize is... Let's see. Key cards. They have a moon on them. How many? That means there are... These are the moon cards the announcer was talking about. Now we can play the next AB game. They gave us two. Just like with the sun cards. Lovely. I'm a solo, so I'll take one. That's fine with you guys, right? <laughs> sure, go for it. We've got two other things left. I've seen one of them before, but this one... Is that like a PDA? Some kind of input device? It has a keyboard on it. And a cable connected to the top. Odd. We can worry about that later. Might as well take it with us for now, though. And finally, the key. We can get out now. Yeah, this should unlock the exit. Alright. No more screwing around, let's move. Yep, sounds good to me, Fi. This was this was a pretty cool room, so I'm I'm definitely happy with this puzzle. But as are all escape rooms, we've got to get out. So the door is locked. It says lock. All right, let's go. Come on, come on. <laughs> all the text to basically to say yes, I'm putting the key in the lock, and the door is going to unlock. Right. So we found it. An ambidex gate has been opened. Wait, what? What? This is so different, right? We're experiencing this other timeline where Alice is now upset with us because we chose Betray when she chose Ally. And now we went through this different room. Alice has asserted, you know, the order and the combinations of teams for this time around. So that was definitely a twist. And we now have solved the control room, which we had heard nothing about in the previous timeline. So... Some very useful information. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I like that puzzle a lot. And I'm looking forward to whatever we solve in the next episode. But until that next episode, this has been Midnight Zero. And this mission is complete.